Mike Tyson has said once again, much like a lot of great fighters, Rocky Balboa, perhaps you heard of him, no women, no weed leading up to the big fight July 20th with Jake Paul. But the bigger update for a lot of other people is that it's an actual sanctioned fight now as of today, meaning it counts on their record. Professional boxing is acknowledging it as a real fight. It's a legit fight. That's up for speculation. People still want to say there's a fix or it's all about the money or this but it's, is rigged. But it's sanctioned. Or, it's a, yeah, it's sanctioned, a sanctioned fight. Sanctioned fight. So, so part of that is there is an official winner. When it's right. an exhibition, there's no official in the in the books winner. A la Tyson, Roy Jones Jr., but this is a sanctioned pro fight as of now. That's the big important update. But the other side question is when you say no weed and Mike Tyson's known for his mic bites and his Tyson Ranch and <laughs> hot boxing and you know, he dabbles in that world and you say no women dabbles. Would you say that is clear advantage? Do you think that doesn't matter? Especially when you think about what Ryan Garcia just pulled off. You know, he was partying, said he drank almost every night leading up to the event. At the weigh-in, him and his dad both admitted it was apple cider and water or something like that. I mean, carbonated apple cider. I mean, some people are saying Garcia pulled the fast one on everyone. On Vegas, on everything, right? But when you see what he was capable of doing, you know, does it really matter that much if you're that talented, if you're that prepared? You know, it's like in life. If you're that prepared and you're that responsible, you sort of get a little more leeway. Even as a dad, I give my daughter more leeway. You know why? Because she's responsible. She does well in school and everything else. If Tyson's disciplined and dedicated and prepared, does it matter that much if he has a drink, if he has a joint here and there? He's saying he's not doing it either way. What but but I just wonder, that, like Danny G, if I told you from now until July 21st, no thick the weed, Mike Tyson style, <laughs> would that affect you? Do you think that would affect most guys, women? Like, I, it's not hurting to, to play it disciplined, it's, right? I think it would put you on edge for sure. And do we want that to come out of Mike. Is that the point? Is the point yeah. to is the point to unearth the buried angry Mike Tyson and Oh, we said that when we speculated about two weeks ago because the announcement then was he's gonna stop smoking. Right? It was smoke was it cigarettes? Does he smoke cigarettes no, too? Weed, just weed. He's just he's, weed. This guy's yeah. high every day. Because Yeah, this rumor He said specifically right. so that he could be aggravated and agitated and take it out on his opponent. Yeah, this rumor's been out there for a few weeks and he officially made it known no weed, no women. But now it's no women, yeah. No yeah. women is the update. So if you take a guy like Mike, who has spent the better part of a decade becoming this calm, chill version of himself, I'm not that guy anymore. Like he loves to talk about how he's not that guy anymore. He's philosophical. This guy smokes and talks like Neil deGrasse Tyson about the universe and the world and life. And you take Mike Tyson back to the old school Mike, where he's pent up, angry, Ooh. irritated. You know, this is a real crazy stretch. No release. Yeah. This is a crazy <laughs> stretch. Hold on. Hear me out, though. That's his medicine in a lot of ways, right? That calms him down and makes him a better person. He yeah. said that himself, like weed and when he licked the... Toad's back. He licked the toad. Remember that we he said saw that changed his life? Covino, we saw it for ourselves. When we were broadcasting live in Vegas at the Blue Wire Studios, he was there doing the hot boxing podcast before we went on. When you, yeah. He, yeah. Got, he was frustrated and they had to get him out of there. He was really angry. Why? Remember, he found out he couldn't smoke weed inside the new studio. Yeah. So when you take so for a few hours, yeah. yeah, for a few yeah. hours, I say medicine in quotes, air quotes. What well, is medicine? It is medicine. right. I mean, when you take people off their medicine, things could happen. Air quotes not necessary. And over the weekend, this is like a silly side story that's in my Vato algorithm. I have a Vato algorithm. What was Selena's brother's name? A B. That was her dude. Anything for you, oh, Selena's. Oh, I think you're right. What's his name? Was it AB? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure. you're right. He was doing a, a, a show at his hometown in San Antonio, and they started booing him, right? 
But then he went off on the crowd like, you guys are whack. I hate you guys. F you anyway. Right? And, he, and it became this, this viral Vato story of like, yo, man, he lost it on stage because he was attacking the crowd. He then had to go to social media and apologize because he said he got a cancer scare. And because of the testing and everything he was doing. He had to be off his medication, and all his bipolar sort of tendencies started oh. to come out. And he had just been off for a few days or whatever. So he apologized. So, hey, you take Mike Tyson off the weed, you never know what angry side of him might come out, and he'll take that out on Jake Paul, and that's what we want to see as fans. The point in the stretch and the side story was, or the analogy was, maybe that's what people need to get into that that zone, it's not a zone they want to be in, but if you're going to be in the ring and you're going to be fighting somebody, it might work to your benefit in that moment. We're not just talking a little bit of weed either. A few years ago oh, yeah. on that same podcast of his, he admitted he burns through $40,000 a month. Dude, that's a lot yeah, of I weed. I mean, this is not a guy that takes an edible to get some rest once in a while or socially on a Friday night you know, passes it to the left. This is the guy that's high and subdued most of the time. I'm the new Mike Tyson. That guy I'm combined man. combined with no sexual release, we might see a very frustrated, different, agitated, angry, agitated. Irritated. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, that might a, be the good thing. So, again, what are your thoughts on that? Again, the update is it's a sanctioned pro fight now. No weed, no women, and... Are we going to get victory as a result? Do you think it doesn't matter as much after you saw what Garcia pulled off? What if I told you that I think – here's my thoughts. Okay. I want to make it clear. I don't think there's any harm in staying disciplined and prepared, right? So you could be talented, but if you're talented and disciplined, more power to you. I think that's only going to add to your results. So I don't think there's any harm in being disciplined to this level. Is it necessary? Like I said, Ryan Garcia yeah, sort of proved that otherwise. I mean, that's my point. My point is, if you told me, hey, Rich, take any vices one might have. No women or gambling or drinking or drugging. Don't do that you know, for the next three months because you're preparing for something big at work, for whatever you do at work. Do you really think... Those type of adjustments would make you a, a better, more prepared man? Or is it just irritating him for no reason? Yeah, well, put yourself in that situation, right? Let's say, all right, it's not even May yet. This fight's in July. I, that's all what right? I'm saying. This, this is not like in July, it's not in July two weeks. 20th. So if we said to you, the average fella who just has to get ready for, uh, I don't know, a presentation at work or a sales meeting or, or anything, hey, man, you can't have any familiar relations, sexual relations, a drink, whatever it is that you do, like Rich said, as your vice, you can't do any of that. You can't have a day off until that date, July 20th. How aggravated and irritated would you be? You'd be on edge, dude. Right? So it's only going to add to this guy's inner monster, and I'm excited for it. Yeah. Now that it's a sanctioned pro fight, I don't think Tyson's one that cares much about legacy here, but I think it matters that much more. Like, you don't want to lose to Jake Paul on your professional record. So I think that's awesome. I well, think advantage Tyson. The public sentiment, we can move on, but the public sentiment, Kavino, has changed. Well, you mean the uh, Vegas odds, right? The Vegas odds. But what does Vegas know? Again, when they were just duped by Garcia. I hate to keep bringing him up into this, but Vegas had him as a major underdog because he was trolling everybody. Mike Tyson. He rope a doped Vegas. Jake Paul, according to the New York Post yesterday. Vegas sees a massive betting line movement as Tyson's sparring videos and personal decisions are made public. So, Rich, people, people if you watching, didn't have edibles for a week, you'd be hard to deal with. Imagine Tyson giving up weed for two months. Let's see. The betting public is all in on Mike Tyson. The line is only moving in one direction. and that's I. But that could be a bunch of 30, 40, 50-year-old guys like us betting on Mike Tyson because it's our childhood. Hey, have, or, you, have you seen Rich when he doesn't have coffee? He's like a little baby bee. Honestly, if ah! I... If I... Would we... When Rich doesn't have a coffee, you would act... You would think his world was ending. I got a raging headache. Oh, He's like a grumpy, like angry Mickey Mouse. 
Oh, yeah. get out of my way. I'm not that. I'm not. Ooh. Listen, I want to make it clear. I'm not that. So can you imagine Mike Tyson without his weed? I'm not that. This is great. I'm not that a-hole that's like, don't talk to me until I you have my are. coffee. No, I'm not that guy. I'm saying I personally will feel. You're I got a headache, and I just I'm I'm all yeah, irritable. You feel kind of under the weather. Yeah, because oh. in the morning I'm like I need something to get me rolling. I've had my coffee, and then at night, you know, if you, if you don't if you if you're a guy that takes a little edible or has a little cocktail, a little old fashioned or something, you might not be able to get a good night's sleep. Mike so, Tyson for the next three months is going to be disciplined. The way he was in the eighties and on nineties, ready to explode on Jake Paul's face. The Mike Tyson that punched no Ed danger. Helms in the face and uh, you know the Hangover. That angry Mike Tyson. That angry Tyson. So that we'll don't see. mess with me. <laughs> ah! That angry sort of snarling could snap at any moment, Mike Tyson. And I hope that Tyson doesn't show up when we do a very special Monday edition of Tyson Trivia, giving away prizes to get the week going. Like I said, this will be a fun week. Cinco de Mayo weekend coming up, and. Canelo Munguia this weekend, speaking of fights. Spotty should light up a joint right in front of him, see what he does. See what he does, man. Yeah. By the way, Tyson, uh, according to Las Vegas and some of the sports books, Tyson is far and away the better's favorite more than any other fight in this, How year, is this that year. possible, dude? Because you know what it is? It's a bunch of people that are like us, 40-year-old dudes that are like, Mike Tyson's my childhood. I played punch out in my childhood bedroom. It's Mike Tyson. There's no way he could lose to an influencer. And the sentiment is, oh, he's an underdog too, so I could double People my money. Need to drop that narrative, by the way, that Jake Paul's an influencer. That's garbage. That dude's been boxing for years now at a steady pace. So he's not an influencer anymore. Wanna hear this? Wanna hear how much He was an influencer. I'll wrap with this and then we'll talk about Kevin Durant and NBA and NFL draft, all the stuff on your mind. Mike Tyson, from the time this boxing line opened. Do you know it has now dropped as of this past Friday, a couple days ago? Tyson is a near even odds in the fight. He is plus 105. Jake Paul is minus 130. This started out as Jake Paul minus 300, minus 400, and Mike Tyson was a significant 3 to 1 underdog. And now, according to Las Vegas, and when I be even Buster money, Douglas, Buster Douglas with 42 to 1. Even 42 to one. Money. How do you explain that big swing? Is everyone just delusionally thinking there's no way Mike Tyson loses? I think there's a great chance that he could lose only because he's fighting strength and youth. And well, again, and Father Time's undefeated. As you said, Mike Tyson's 30 second videos might be impressive, but those are for 30 seconds exactly. against a sparring partner. What do we all want to see? Obviously, Mike Tyson winning, but. I think it's going to be a much closer fight than anyone realizes. Jake Paul's a big, strong kid, and he's a boxer. He's not an influencer. So anyway, that's the update. Professional sanctioned fight. No weed. <laughs> no women. Only victories for Mike Tyson, at least we hope. So sounds like, sounds like a boring three months. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, sounds, sounds like three months I don't want any part of. And you know what, too? If you're going <laughs> to make that sacrifice, too, you want to make it count. You better win, then. So th Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's added pressure to what did I do all this for? If I'm not going to annihilate this guy in the ring. Which was why probably I, exactly. another reason why the, the line has moved so yep, much. Because yep, people yep. are like, if Tyson's really going to take this serious, if he's really going to take this serious. Yeah. So that's putting right. the, the pressure on him to show up July 20th against Jake Paul. So props, happy to hear it. Like I said, discipline and dedication is never going to hurt the situation. So props to Mike Tyson for taking it serious at the ripe age of 57.